Okay, we just went over the modified mount and how to stop the elbow escape when he starts shrimping out and pushing your knee down. Sometimes you are a little late to that show there. So as you go, sometimes he's already push, starting to push it through. Okay, so before I can get this to the hip real quick, it's already past his knee. His knee's already starting to come through. So I call this one like the bailout or the ejector seat, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, sometimes you have to do that. Okay, I'd rather anything, what are the three dominant positions? Mount, back, and side, right? I always want to, if I get one of those positions, I always want to stay in one of those positions until I finish the match. If you're going against an experienced guy, a black belt, who's really good, he has a really good guard, and you finally do the right things and get to the side, you know, you finally get a dominant position on this guy, do you really want him to just get right back to guard? No, my, like the best guys in the world, they don't let you just get back to guard. If they get a dominant position, most times the, the match is over. They're going to get a choke. They're going to get a submission. They're going to get something. So when I get to, to side or when I pass and I go to mount, I don't care if I lose that. I mean, I don't want to lose that position. But if I lose that position, it's only going to be to one of the other two dominant positions. So if I'm mount and I lose it, I don't mind going back to side or going to the back. If I'm on the back and I lose it, I don't mind going back to mount or side. Right? I don't mind that. But what I do mind is him getting me back into half guard with his underhook and, and, and knee shield and all that crap or getting back to guard. I don't want that because that's a ton of work to get back to a dominant position from there. I want to get to a, a dominant position, whether it be side mount or back. I want to cook him. I want to finish him. So if I am mounted and he flattens the leg, like my feet are under his butt the way they're supposed to be, and he flattens a leg, okay, but I'm like, no, you know what? I'm going to use sticky feet. Okay, so sticky feet. My toes stick to his foot, to his knee. I don't let that knee come under. He tries coming under, sticky feet, sticky feet, sticky feet. Sometimes that works great, sticky feet, right? But sometimes I start to feel him break my sticky feet. He gets his elbow inside of here, and I feel him start to push. Boom. Rather than let him push my whole leg in between his legs, did you see what I did? I swiveled off to a knee on belly or a side control. So slow motion. Sticky feet, always. So as I feel them flattening, I'm not just going to jump to it. I'm always going to do sticky feet first because sticky feet are going to allow me to, to kind of slow this down so that I could jump into my modified mount. I'd rather do that safer and I stay on mount. But my sticky toes to his knee, if I stick it to his knee and I feel him start to like bump and move, yeah, and it freeze. Once I feel this happen, watch, watch my sticky feet and his knee start to come under it. Once I feel that happen, the second he beats that, he beats my toes, if I wait 0.4 seconds, he's going to trap my foot with his legs. Boom. There was the 0.4 second. Now it's too late. There's other stuff we can do here. I'm going to show you that in the bonus section, but I don't want that to happen. So as this knee breaks my sticky feet, freeze right here. My heel goes to my butt. So I'm going to lean forward. My heel goes to my butt, because guess what? Now that my heel is to my butt, can he grab my leg? It's gonna be tough. And then I immediately get onto this foot, and I swivel it over to knee on belly. Like I said, did I lose the mount? Yeah, he did the right things. I didn't get to the foot and hip, uh, get the foot to the hip on time for the modified mount. It's my bad. I abandoned the position, but where did I go? to another dominant position. So I'm okay with this. Boom, I'm on side now. What do you think I'm gonna implement? Side attack blueprint. I'm just gonna start going after things. Going after side control, going after, back after the mount. And you can always work your way back to mount if you really want to, right? Go back to mount. So this is the bailout, okay? I'd rather bail out and go to another dominant position than let him push me back into a not dominant position, like bottom half guard, which is so annoying. Right? So he gets his elbow inside, he's able to break through my legs, freeze, he flattens it. I feel his knee touching my toes, but I'm going to do sticky feet. Sticky feet is going to allow me, bring your knee up to go to here. See how it slows him down, getting that under? And then I can go to here. Sticky feet slow it down, modified mount happens. But sometimes he breaks under the sticky feet. He breaks it, now boom, see what I did? I lean forward, the more I lean forward, if I stay here, my heel's here, he's going to grab it. I lean forward. Boom. This leg flies out. Let's come over here. So slow motion. Slow motion. Watch it from the back. He flattens. Sticky feet. Slow motion. As I, I feel that. I 
And now we're all the weight on the knee and this leg. I have control, I can control the shoulders, control the hips. And from here, if I want to try to go right back to mount, I can. Or I can just jump off the side control and start going after the side attack blueprint. Okay? So don't have any shame in bailing out. Okay? No shame in bailing out. I don't mind going to another dominant position. I just don't want to ever take a step back as far as going from a dominant position to a non-dominant position like half guard. 